All right, I've got another proof of concept for Profi OS 7. Um, so I've been working on this for a little while. I'm still working with Frederick on a few parts of it. Um, so some things may change, but the initial proof of concept works. Um, there'll probably be some cleanup and some, uh, you know, optimization. Um, but so this is, if you notice my blade, I do have a piece of tape in the middle. So I don't actually have a staff saber. So if you think of like a dark Maul or like an Inquisitor, where you have the hilt in the middle and then you have two blades coming out, um, we can have a single profi board run those two blades. Um, but up until now, we really don't have a way to do like separate ignition, separate retraction, separate effects. Um, so for OS 7, what I've been working on is a secondary blade setup. Um, and what that does is it, it's actually going to let you set um, a, a blade being secondary. So let me turn this on right now. So t right now, if you have a, si so pretend this is the hilt, um, if you have a single profi board running two blades in a staff type setup, um, when you ignite it, it's going to ignite both blades. When you retract, it's going to retract both blades. Um, so this is a simple setup right now. So um, what I've done just for testing, since I don't have a staff saber, is this is actually a sub-blade reverse, and then this is a normal sub-blade. This is meant to be the primary blade. So uh, when I talk about primary blades, that's meant to be as if this was the um, hilt itself, if I was holding it here, this is the primary blade. This is the secondary blade, so this is set up as a sub-blade reverse so that it goes this way for everything on purpose for testing. Um, so if you imagine this tape being where you would hold the hilt, this is your two blades. Um, so right now you get normal ignition and then normal retraction um, to the hilt. Um, now what I've been working on is a secondary ignition and retraction. What that is, is it'll allow you to set up a secondary blade. And this is all going to be done in style code, so it's within the preset you're going to define um, whatever your primary blade is is just going to use pretty much regular styles. Whatever your secondary blade is, it's actually going to have some new effects and some new capabilities. Um, and one of those would be the secondary um, ignition and retraction. And what that does is it's going to allow us to control this blade, my secondary blade, separately for ignition and retraction. Now, how um, the buttons will be kind of figured out. If you have a third button, that'll probably be the ultimate setup. Um, but we'll take a look at how to get it incorporated in two button. One button might be even trickier. One button you may, uh, for anybody who's going to do this setup, we may have to actually kind of change um, the buttons up or drop a feature. Um, but let me get into a new setup. So this now is set up with a secondary ignition retraction. Um, and I have a few bells and whistles on top of it. But so. If you imagine this is my hilt, if I press my power button, I'm going to get the primary blade, again, this blade, to ignite. All right. So now, that's ignited. Once the primary blade is ignited, then we have access to the secondary blade. And the buttons may change, but I have it set up now so I can ignite the secondary blade on its own. So that secondary blade ignites on its own. Now, I can also retract the secondary blade on its own. Um, while the main blade is active. So what ends up happening is the primary blade controls the hum and the swings and all that. So as long as the primary blade is on, we can turn this blade on or off at will. Um, if we turn this blade off, so if you use your normal power button, it's going to turn both blades off. And that's because of the hum and the swings and stuff. So if I just, um, so I'll ignite the main one again, so pretend I'm holding here. So that ignites. Then when I want to ignite the secondary blade, I'll ignite the secondary blade. All right, now I've got my secondary. Now the secondary blade ignition has the same out sound as your primary blade. It plays by itself though. So whenever you do it, you get that same sound again. Um, now obviously if you have multiple sounds, it's going to randomly select it, etc. But we're using the same out file. So you don't need new uh, sound files for it. It's using the same out, the same in sound. Now I can retract this blade independently of this blade as long as this blade stays on. Um, and again, that's really tied to the hums and the swings. So if I turn this one off, so pretend I'm holding the hilt. So I can retract that one. And again, my hums and swings stay active, the main blade's active, and I can ignite that one again. All right, so you get the secondary ignition and retraction are independent um, as long as the main blade is on. If the main blade is off, so if we retract the main blade, it has to retract both, and again, hums and swings. All right. Now, on top of that, the ability for all the conditional effects coming in OS 7 added some new capabilities. So I can also do all kinds of other ignitions on that secondary blade. 
Um, so what I've got set up right here, and, and it's kind of going to be up to you. So you can use it. These are transitions. So it's, uh, it uses a new form of in-out TRL um, called secondary in-out TRL. Um, it has a bunch of other effects, but you can set up whatever you want. So I have the, the wipe in, wipe out, uh, the wipe in Axel and the wipe in Axel, which uh, speeds up and slows down as it moves. Um, but you could use any ignition or attraction effect um, for any of these blades. All right, so what I did, though, is using conditional effects, I've actually set it so that if you hold your blade parallel on ignition, normal ignition, so when I ignite the primary blade, if I'm parallel, I've actually set it up so that it automatically, right after this one finishes, there's about a two-second delay, and then this one will ignite automatically. And that's based on Darth Maul and the Phantom Menace when he holds his saber, you know, the iconic one that everybody loves. So I'm going to try to do it with my pinky here, but pretend I'm holding my hilt and I'm parallel. So I get my first ignition, and then shortly after I get my second. Now that's automatic, and that's because we have the conditional effect capability plus this secondary blade capability. So you can set it up so that you have the button set up to do the secondary blade on and off, but we can also use conditional effects so that I can set it up. Now it doesn't have to be parallel. It would be whatever you want to set in the style, and every preset you can set up different ways to do it. But now you're going to, because we have this secondary blade capability, and we have the conditional effects, we're actually able to now set something up like that, so that if your blade is parallel, you get the Darth Maul ignition of the primary blade, and then the secondary blade. And there's more. Um, so, on top of that, again, using conditional effects, we've actually now also got the ability for like blashes, blasts and clashes and everything to pick a blade. Um, so we're using conditional effects to determine if it's primary blade or secondary blade that gets the effect. So all the controls are going to be the same. So it's the normal blast button, it's normal clashes, etc. Um, but they're conditional upon what you're doing with the hilt. So, and again, that will be something you can set up. So I've set it up so that it's parallel or tech, whichever blade is pointing up is going to get the blast or clash. The idea being, if you actually had like a staff and you were clashing, you would usually clash high. Or if you were blocking, you usually block high. Now, because we can't tell your intention, we do have to pick some kind of a condition. So this condition is blade angle. When I point, whatever blade is pointing up, it's going to take on the clash and the blast effects. And then if I tip it down, if I tip the other one up, so if this is my secondary blade, this one will take on the effects. So it's whatever blade is up, at least in this condition, is going to take on the effects. So if I have this blade up or parallel and I do blast, it's on that blade. Now if I change my deflection and point the second blade up, it takes on the blasts. And then this is going to be, so imagine that's the hilt because I can't hold everything. So same thing with clashes. Um, it's going to be, if I'm, if this is the blade that's up, so if I was holding this up and I went to block, this one's going to take on the clash and then vice versa. So if that one's up, all my clash effects will be there. And then if it's reversed and I'm using this one to block. And the idea being, if you do have two blades, Normally, you wouldn't be, I mean, obviously the Qui-Gon and stuff like that, when he's fighting Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, he takes one clash on one, one on the other, but the idea is you would be using this to deflect um, and go back and forth, so that's why we, in this condition, it's set up so whatever blade is up is going to take on the effect. Um, you can set it with other conditions, um, they're basically functions based on all, all different things, um, but the condition is, is telling which blade it's suppo is supposed to show the effect. The controls are the same as normal. Um, so, and that was kind of the, what I was going after with the conditional effects is instead of having to like figure out and guess which blade is the second, which one's the first, um, and how you want to do it and trying to figure all these controls out, we're just going to let the condition of the effect control which blade shows that effect. Um, now, I'm still working on lockup. Um, I'm working with Frederick on lockup. The concept will be the same. It'll be a conditional lockup so that whatever blade is set up high, at least in this one, would take on the lockup, thinking that you would probably block high. So whichever blade would block um, will take on lockup, but there's a little bit of a lockup's a little bit different than the normal uh, effects. Uh, so there isn't a conditional version yet, so I have to figure out how to do that. Um, and then the plan will be for melt and for drag, at least right now. They're only ever going to work on your primary blade, so whatever you set up. So all of this is going to be in your style code and in your presets. You will have a primary blade, which you'll apply the normal effects to, um, the normal blade styles to. Um, the conditions are new, but you would add a conditional effect to that for the blast and the clash and the lockup. Um, and you'll have lockup, you'll have drag and melt on there. 
um, and then you'll set up a secondary blade and that enables the secondary blade gets the secondary ignition the secondary retraction um, it also has conditional effects but it won't take on drag or um, uh, melt um, just because of how the motion of them because if you're parallel we don't know which one made impact and also if you're ever if you're pointing the secondary blade down, that technically means the primary blade is pointing up, which means drag doesn't activate. Um, I'm sure there's ways to work around it, but just logically thinking, what we'll do is your primary blade is going to be where you're going to do your drags and your melts. Um, every other effect will set up conditionally. Um, lightning block, actually, I think lightning block you can have either way. You can set lightning block to run conditionally if you wanted to, or having lightning dance across both blades I think is perfectly fine. Uh, so lightning block is kind of going to be user dependent. If you want to set it up as a conditional effect, you would. If you want to just set it up so that it affects both blades at the same time, because it's a random effect anyway, you'll get all kinds of... Actually, I think it's on here now. Let me just double check. Um, let's see. Nope, oh, wrong button. Reverse. Yeah, so lightning block's on both. But you could obviously set up how you want. Um, but so... Um, Again, this is all still in the works. I'm still working out the lockup, um, but the ability to do primary blade, secondary blade, and get independent effects and all that is now coming in OS 7. Um, there'll be uh, obviously documentation and stuff. There'll be a lot of new capabilities. Um, but again, this is a small piece of the puzzle. Um, we've got so much more coming. And technically, the use of the secondary secondary ignition and retraction um, can be applied to more than just uh, a staff type saber. Um, we can set it up, actually, you can build sub-blades and do a ton with it. So um, even if you don't have a staff, like I don't have it right now, um, you'd be able to use some of these effects in other ways. So there, there's like, going to be a lot of capabilities. But um, I've got the, all this set up, working. Um, now we just obviously, throughout development and testing, we'll probably clean it up a bit. Um, but as a starting point for proof of concept, it's working great. So I'm pretty excited. Um, so still tons more coming. Hope you enjoy.